things are starting to break bud here in mid-March, so it's time for a quick spring update. We had some frost recently when the temperature dropped to 23 degrees Fahrenheit. And a few things I think were damaged, but not this. This is the bald cypress. And you can see it's just starting to put out new needles for the year. This is a deciduous conifer. And this is another deciduous conifer, the Dawn Redwood, also breaking bud. No damage from the cold either. My smallest Lijiang spruce is also breaking bud, and it doesn't look like it was damaged by the cold. This is the Japanese larch, and it also was not damaged by the cold, but no surprise there, this larch might be one of the most cold tolerant trees in the whole collection. Also a deciduous conifer. This is the Algerian fir, and it was damaged by the cold, but not this 23 degrees. I think this may have been damaged by other cold when it dropped down to the teens, or maybe even when it got down to 4 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, definitely some cold damage on the Algerian fir, but I will leave it in to see if it can recover. This is a hybrid spruce here. This is a hybrid between the Jezo spruce, or Yeddo spruce, Picea Je uh, Jesuensis, I think, and the Sakhalin spruce, Picea glenii, and this one was damaged by the cold, even though this comes from northeastern Asia, which has a very cold, wet climate. Uh, the new growth is not frost hardy, so you can see some of the uh, new growth has turned brown, where it's been damaged, but other buds that were not as far along are still okay. So, um, somewhat disappointing considering this is a slow growing spruce but also acceptable because there are well there's at least one maybe two buds here right at the very top that were not damaged so I'll take that as a uh, good outcome considering the risks. The boxleaf honeysuckle had also broken bud but it doesn't look like it took any damage during the 23 degree cold spell so that's pretty good for a boxleaf honeysuckle. Considering it was a little damaged when it dropped to 4 degrees, 4 degrees is fairly rare around here, so I am once again favorable and positive about the boxleaf honeysuckle. And it may be premature to declare this, but I don't think there was any damage on the Eliagnus either. This is silverberry. A couple of my Black Hill spruces have just started to break bud, but I don't think there was any damage. And this is another tree that is very cold hardy, so it's a good result there as well. Okay, this is the Momi fir, Abies firma, Japanese fir. And this was the biggest risk going into the 23 degree weather. It looks like it's been spotty damage. Here you can see that main leader there is still green. It's good news. But on the one right next to it, these have turned brown. There used to be green on the inside of this little bud here. And now you can see it's all brown there. So um, the good news is, is that a lot of the uh, main leaders up top had not broken bud. You can see here's one branch where it never broke bud. And I think higher up the tree there were some large buds that had not broken yet. So. We'll just see. I think it's going to be a disappointing year for growth on the Momi fir because of this, but then again it may turn around and put out more buds later in the year. But it's not a total loss this time around, and it could have been a lot worse. There's one big bud. Only one side opened and it's still green, so spotty damage. And considering what was at stake, I'm still satisfied with the result on the mummy fur, especially since it looks like there are still some really good buds that did not open completely. The one I'm most worried about is the main leader, but we'll see what happens. And that's just the way it goes. This Tennessee is probably the northern limit of where you would want to try to grow Abies firma at least in terms of the above ground tree. The rootstock is used on a lot of grafted 
furs and the top side can be a lot more cold hardy on other fur species. This is not cold damage related, but some unknown problem has been causing my blue cloak con color fur to lose needles. You can see the little circular spots where the needles were attached and they've just dropped off. If I look further down the tree, you can see there the browning problem and some black spotting, which is usually an indication of fungus active in the needles. So it could be some sort of needle cast affecting the tree. Let's see if we can get a little closer here. Yeah, you can see, hard to focus, but a few needles turning brown. Get a better shot this way. Yeah, there you go. See how just individual needles are turning brown or black? That sooty residue is a sign of fungus. So, you know, it's out of its region to be growing a con color fur in Tennessee. It prefers drier, colder climates. And the winter was relatively warm and wet. But it is an experiment, and the good news is it is grafted to Abe's firm a rootstock, so we'll see how it eventually fares. But this is the first time I've really seen a problem with it. Something is ailing the blue cloak con color fur, and it's starting to lose needles. The pyracantha, otherwise known as firethorn, it also a broken bud and put out a lot of new growth right before the drop to 23 and it doesn't look like it was damaged at all so another vote of confidence for pyracantha there were also some very large buds on the florida anise elysium floridanum that were not damaged by the cold and there were also a lot of little green shoots here peeking out on the chinese hemlock and for the most part it looks like they were not damaged either so that's good news. Chinese hemlock is one of my favorites. And it was not damaged. This was another big risk, like the Japanese fir. This is the Diodar cedar. And uh, there's been several times where foliage was damaged by cold due to uh, early frosts. But this time it looks mostly okay. I think I can see on the very end of that branch some of the green foliage there was killed by the frost and turned yellow. But look at all the other green shoots that were not damaged. So a uh, very good result on the Diodar cedar this time. This is the Carl Fuchs cultivar, by the way. This is the Wilson spruce. And it looks like there may have been one or two buds that were damaged by the cold, but they weren't really out that far. And on the whole, I would say the tree was mostly not affected this is a fairly slow-growing spruce, so any loss of foliage would be a significant setback in the short term. Obviously not over the long term. But uh, we'll wait and see what it does. Even if one of the top leader sprouts was damaged, I bet a side one can re-establish vertical dominance. This is the Chinese yew, Taxus chinensis. And it looks like some of the new sprouts are a little wilted and not looking that great. I don't know if they're really killed or slightly damaged, but when it comes to you, I'm not that worried because it can sprout out from anywhere and, you know, there's no real uh, main leader that we have to worry about protecting with you. Any branch can become a leader. But it is interesting to see that it sprouted fairly early and it looks like it was damaged. Here's an unfortunate casualty. This is not frost related. I don't know why, but I ordered this um, incense cedar from Etsy. There's a seller on there called Mike's Plants and it arrived in great condition. And maybe I just didn't give it enough water during the winter time when it warmed up and uh, I guess maybe started photosynthesizing again and uh, the roots got too dry. I think it you know, like many conifers, it gets to a point of dryness where you just can't recover, and I think this may have happened to this one. So uh, that's unfortunate. It was a really good looking incense cedar, but I'm pretty sure at this point it's dead. So I'll have to take that out and try something else there. Or maybe a different incense cedar. We'll see. There's another Eliagnus, and it doesn't look like the new foliage was damaged by the cold. 
The Japanese plum yew has also broken bud, but it doesn't look like it was damaged by the cold. So on the whole, a little bit of damage in the evergreen collection, but not that much, and I bet that's the last cold blast of the year, so I would say I emerged relatively unscathed from that late freeze. 